Ten out of ten, GameSpot. <laughs> Moonfinder. Oh, that would. It'll be compete good. with the Pathfinder MMO. <laughs> Pat, what? They've got everything, you know, Pathfinder the MMO, Pathfinder the Flamethrower, Pathfinder the Card Game, Pathfinder the Dice Game, everything. Yep. Oh, uh, have you played that Pathfinder uh, co-op deck building card game thing? I own it. Any good? I own it. You haven't played, I haven't played, yet, have played you? it yet. I haven't played it yet. I bought it at Gen Con. In fact, I like probably pushed an old woman out of my way and like broke her hand no. to get it at Gen Con, and I haven't played <laughs> totally worth it. Okay. okay. Totally worth it. My favorite game right now that is not a role playing game, minis game, yeah. is. Uh, Fiasco? No, 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 no. No, uh, well, no that's a role playing game. It's, okay. Yeah, it's a role uh, But it's uh, uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse. Oh, yeah. yeah that's it's fantastic. Yeah. And I was thinking that if I like that one, I'm probably going to absolutely love the Pathfinder. Uh, I, I've heard nothing but good things, but I just cannot yeah. attach to that. Yeah, like, uh, I can't play it with anybody right now because everybody who I would play it with is currently running through that adventure path with me. Yeah. So I, if I run, I, if I play that game with they're, them, they're actually coming out with a, um, a different adventure path, um, oh. which will be their second set, which they're doing Skull and Shackles. Good, 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 good. So you can make all the pirate jokes you want. Yep. I, I, I don't get pirates. I really don't. Pirates are just... I, I understand why people love pirates. I just... I can't. I can't. Because every player would be talking like this. And then I just want to strangle someone. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, people are... Let me fucking beat! Well, so. that was different. <laughs> I was a land pirate. <laughs> there was no ship. We were in the middle of a landlocked area. But I played a pirate. <laughs> he was the only person who talked like that. The only person who talked like that. It wasn't it wasn't an accident, it was a speech impediment. And only you could get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing it you know what? That that set of dice that I used during that game, I have in a special leather bag. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only dice I have ever rolled well. It's because you had like forty attacks! Seriously, it didn't matter. If things go well, something would get through. And something good crazy. gotta come up, right? I was, I had the torch of the burning sky, and whatever that other fucking artifact was, and I was dual wielding the sons of bitches. I was already eaten by a technical monster. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I had, I had. that. You chose the corn maze. Okay. The, I didn't this, choose you the corn. You chose the corn maze. Okay. This guy. No description of the corn maze. This yeah. guy throws in this this galloping, flaming deer thing, and with a thing sticking out of it. It's written. It's written in the adventure. Complain to Ryan Knock and Jacob Driscoll. So, Thank anyway, you Driscoll. we say... Complain to that. We say, okay, we, we need to get that thing out of there, right? Because that's what's making this thing angry. And so I jump on the thing, and I'm the only one with acrobatics, so I'm the only one who can get a hold of the fucking thing. So I yank it up, and poof, I have an artifact whatever I want, basically. The stick, right? That was the stick. Uh, the, I, was, I still existed at this point. Yeah. And so, anyway, I, I turn it into a rapier, and I have a pokey stick that's an artifact. Ooh, actually, uh, going on about the burning sky, mm -hmm. bring up the, the old man. Oh, I will in a sec. I will in a sec. <laughs> now, didn't you tell me about your character syndrome here, now, guys? Hmm? Oops. Just, just, just. Now, now, later on, later on in the adventure, there's this bone on the ground. And apparently all my comrades are standing around it going, oh, 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 and I hadn't been listening during the description of the fucking thing. Because you so were still smoking at this point. I was no, still smoking. No, no, he wasn't smoking. He was in the room. He was in the room listening to every word I said, but it just went, psh, psh. So anyway, everybody's going, oh, 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 talking about this thing. And I'm going, oh, it's a fucking bone. And I pick it up. And then he goes, everybody looks at me and goes, what the fuck are you doing? No, first I had you make like nine checks because there's like a chance it could like consume you. And what? Fire. Yeah, no, no. I, I picked it up and said, what the fuck is this? All of the players at the table are going, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going, I, it's a big bone. Uh, what does it go to? And then Dustin goes, start rolling dice. And I'm going, it's fucking trapped. He goes, 
Kinda. He's like, you fucking adult. And so, <laughs> I, 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 congratulations, Gav. You are now the new possessor and owner of the major artifact this whole campaign is based around. And so I've got, I've got this artifact in my hand. Well, I didn't know it was a fucking torch. And he goes, and one of the other players, Mike, and Mike goes, well, what the fuck did you think it was? I said, I thought it was a bomb. I didn't know. Yeah, here's a goddamn statue of it in your hometown. Oh, he's yeah. not holding a bone. He's holding a fucking torch. And then we're all just, just to start be fighting and stuff to like be, that. To be fair, the bone is actually like a torch. It's it's a femur that, that is torched at the end. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so suffice it to say, Kev got both major artifacts in that campaign. Yeah, so I was, and was dual wielding them as a two-weapon rogue. And... Tumbling past people and kind of doing the the whole sneak attack thing with dual artifacts. But and then, and then, when the, then, when, then when the artifacts didn't work, he had a special wand of shocking grasp that he used specifically for ball zacking, as he called it. Balzac! I remember that. Yeah, now. Balzac. Balzac. They have a button for that in Saints Row Four. Mm. Impressive. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they stole it from me. It's, the, uh, it's uh, much I like how Dragonlance was entirely. I think started. it was the R3 No, not Dragonlance. It was the um, L2, or L3 button. That one anime was stolen from me. Uh, the one with that dark haired guy with the big sword and then the group and the plucky little guy. It's an anime. It sounds like every anime I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like, There's a plucky guy and a guy with a sword. See, like, um, uh, it's that could that part of Legend, that kind of Legend of Lotus Wars. Oh, Lotus Wars. Oh, Lotus okay. Wars. That was stolen from me. Yep. Heard it here first. Well, the old man. The old Ken, man. Can have crushed an old man's skull. No. Asleep. No, that wasn't me. That was Ben. Sorry, ben, ben crushed the old man's skull when he was asleep because Kev told him to. We agreed on it, and he was possessing a young girl and enslaving her. So while he slept, we bludgeoned him to death with a rock. And, it wasn't uh, even bludgeoned. You just picked up a super heavy rock. <laughs> yeah, I picked up a that super heavy rock. Right. Yeah. We enchanted him to be able to pick up a big rock, and we dropped him. Well, yeah. no. The first you took his spell book, which you're like, okay, then he can't cast spells and like dominate. Oh. But he didn't have a spell book because he was all spell mastery. So you like took his like family photos of like his dead wife and threw them into a fire. And then you're like, oh shit, he's gonna wake up and be awful angry. Guess we should bash his skull in with a rock. Dark side points. <laughs> so after we crushed him and he slit his throat. Oh, no, I stabbed him. The wizard of our group said, <laughs> Well, I suppose we should make a Karen for him. What's a Karen? And he's like, Well, it's a pile of rocks that you, uh, that you for a gravesite. Oh, well, I guess we have a head start. <laughs> this. That's why you pick your groups carefully. And never. Well, I, I guess there's ways there's ways to stop this now, but never ever give your players a bag of holding that can fit an entire PC in it. <laughs> oh, okay. The, the one campaign that uh, I was watching you guys play, where they kept on pulling the head out and talking to it. Well, that 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 was yes. They they, they were cutting off heads and using them for speak with dead, which. Kind of isn't supposed. They were to, awful people. Which, 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 yeah, yeah, which kind of isn't supposed to work, but actually can work if you roll a certain percentile. Um, and, and then they like made their characters at like super high level because we jumped the campaign forward a bit, and that's when they were all like, "Oh man, we totally need a bag just for this because we're super high level." And I told them, "I'm like, there's no fucking way you're having a bag of holding just for body parts or like bodies. <laughs> like, you can't have a bag of holding." That is like just just like gentle repose, anything inside of it. Um, you're gonna have to like waste one or something. And then, then of course, someone pulls out that classic treasure to revisit. And it's like bam, bag of corpse holding, right here, page fifty-seven. Okay. And I'm just like you. Okay. Actually, uh, bastard I'm, pieces. I'm, I'm, okay, <laughs> there's this one thing. A broken I, I, I saw this on YouTube where <laughs> these two celebrities. I can't remember who they were, but they. <laughs> They were on top of Brit, uh, things to shit off of, or something like that, <laughs> on, on a bridge, and and one of them was gonna shit off a bridge, 
and stuff like that. Between now, two beards, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Between two beards. I was thinking of I'm this. I'm as scared as you are. I was thinking. I was scared too. You brought that corpse. <laughs> you brought that corpse bag. You went from a corpse bag to celebrity shitting off a bridge. How do you make these connections? You connect the two together, man. Yeah. You fill a shit in the bridge. <laughs> you fill an entire. Be both. You fill an entire bag full of body parts. Then go to a bridge and you shake it out. Oh god! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I'm like a bitch about people spitting off bridges. Well, imagine an entire extra-dimensional space full of body parts and well, being spit on. Can we have a pizza? L- ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this: this wasn't like the worst it could have been. I was seriously considering that he was going to go for shitting in the bag. <laughs> just. <laughs> Putting that one out there. And that's an idea. I've actually, uh. <laughs> was oh. it was last week where. Uh, me, my brother, and a uh, friend of ours, we had a. We, we, we had a lot of conversation. No, no, we don't. Guest we know. I'm vetoing this, this whole. So what's the next question, Gav? What's the next question? Komodo holding. That's a quote. It's a chamber pot. But it's a bag. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, we have entered the uh, the free form. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the free. P- this free is form the part. free form part. Yeah. <laughs> so we just talk about any old fucking thing that comes to mind. Oh God. Okay. Uh, any any like questions? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Uh, what did you think of the second Hobbit movie? Oh, this ought to be good. You have seen it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I don't give two fucks about the elf woman. Like, whatever. What, okay, put it, in a, put, put it, put it in a bed with Lena Lily, and sure, whatever. She, she's fine. I, I adore everything they, they did with Smog. I adored that they, they gave him, like, a giant, like, crazy action scene. I don't care. I don't care, because cause I could listen to Benedict Cumber Smog any day. Yes. Any day. And you know what? That movie was exactly what I wanted it to be. And there was only one plot inconsistency I found with it, and that was the whole reason the movie was ruined for me. I think there's going to be one who fuck of a counterpoint on the set. Huh? It was a bard that ruined it for you? Or? No, no. There, there was one plot inconsistency that, that, that just irked me. Like, it came up right near the end of the movie, like, when they, when they found the dress. Spoiler alert! By the way, this is a book that's, like, older than me. So, like, like when, 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 when Bilbo finds Benedict Cumbersmog and they're having their whole discussion. <laughs> that I was a good man. I love that part. That, 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 was, that, was, that was a great part. And this is what bothered me. And, like, I, I know this is so petty. How the fuck did he know that his name was Thorin Oakenshield? Yes! 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 That was, like, I, that was the I, biggest I, bothering part of the whole movie. I'm like, the dragon was asleep for the past, like, 80 years. And he got his name while the dragon was asleep because they didn't run out of their homelands. Your developers suck. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, you know what? I uh, I had a lot of problems with the movie. Uh, it I was had... it was awesome watching this movie. This movie with him, just because it's like as it's ha- like because like me and my brother, me and Mike, we've we've watched the movie beforehand. Yeah. But you know, and then we watched it with Kev. And like half the time, was just watching. Both of us were like watching him squirm. I, I oh god. Also, I was breeding Pokemon at the time. It was fucking terrible. Terrible. Now, okay, <laughs> there are some points I'm going to concede right now. The dragon was awesome. The dragon was awesome until he started trying to do stuff. When he was talking, he was fucking great. Um, again, the portrayal of Bilbo was fucking fantastic. Yeah, of course. Martin Freeman's fantastic guy. If Bilbo was even in the fucking movie. <laughs> that was part of the problem, I understand. Yeah. Uh, it's the fucking Hobbit. He should be the primary focus of the movie. Okay. I, I get why... I get the logic behind putting Legolas in. No. No. Carry on. He, it's possible he could have been there at some point because they passed no. through. No, carry Damn. on. Okay. 
He didn't need to be there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Blue, money. Carry on. Hey, I, oh, I oh, know. Oh, oh, oh. I know what you're talking about. Uh, the fact that Evangeline Lilly's character was made up for it. Didn't like it. Not because of her acting. I thought she was a fantastic actress, and I thought she did a great job. I thought the way they wrote her was fucked up, and I thought. Now, also, I, 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 my part, I'm worried because she's a new character. Well, because I mean, like, um, for Game of Thrones, they'll just, just kill her off. Exactly. They'll just they're kill just, her they're off. There's like the twenty people who die in the last movie. Yeah, they're going to they're going to shove her in the fridge, and I'm really worried about that. Shove her in the fridge. You know, yeah, that's that's, that's a like, trope. I like that. Yeah. Shove her in the fridge. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing is, all of the parts that were added in felt like they were added in. It was not seamless um, at all. It felt like they shot two separate movies and edited them together. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. Okay. Counterpoint. There is actually one scene that they added in that I thought was fucking spot on. Which one? And that was when Gandalf went to the prison with the ring rates and they'd all broken out. And I love that because it explains so much. I, I, I thought that was that was dead on what they needed to do. Yeah, yeah, they, I think they could have left out a lot of the orc shit. No, 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 I, I'm uh, not talking cool. about like Dol Guldur and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. Because in the books, it's actually much different. Um, yeah. Because he goes there before he meets up with the dwarves and everything. Yeah. But the the scene where he like goes to that it's like it's like a three minute scene where he like climbs up that that like step and then has the fall and it's oh god he's gonna die and come back as get off the gray again so he can come back as get off the white no um but like he goes into that prison and it's like just that shaft and all of the doors are broken open yeah. and you can tell that oh this was where they kept the ring rights because it explains yeah. like oh we have these deathless kings yeah that what that, do we do with them I thought that was was spot on for, yeah. for additions I, yeah yeah that but again that was because I am I am a continuity like lore lore person and I yeah. like things that are like okay we're going to explain rather than put in this generic TNA elf because we need more female characters. If if they were gonna, if they had to throw in female characters, you wanted dwarves. I wanted dwarves. I didn't want fucking elves. This was not an elven story. They made the same mistake in Lord of the Rings where they added elves into the big defining moment of the Helms defi- Deep. Helm's Deep. The defining yeah. moment for for humanity was Helm's Deep. That was the defining moment for Aragorn and humanity. And they threw elves in there and and made it look as if that humanity couldn't have done it without them. And it it, it minimized the impact of the growth of humanity at that point. Yeah. Um, but this is all going to be countered, though. Because in the third movie, when Dane Ironfoot shows up, who has the best actor ever... <laughs> Do you know who is playing Dane Ironfoot? No. So, so Hobbit spoilers! Oh my God, they're older than I am. <laughs> um, so, so like Thorin takes them out, and he's all happy. And then the elves and men show up, and they're all like, "We, we want reparations." And Thorin's like, "Nope." And they're like, "Well, we've got an army. Dick, we've got, move. we've got, we've got an army of elves and men. So we're just gonna." No, nope, I'm a dwarf in the mountain, closing the door. <laughs> and then the elves and the men are like, "What do we, what do we do?" And they're like, "Well." Dwarves in mountains, not much we can do. We're going to have to, like, starve them out or something. And then the dwarves from the, uh, the Iron Hills show up. Uh, yeah, I think it's the Iron Hills. Um, and it's, it's Dane Ironfoot, who is his cousin. Um, Dane Ironfoot is being played by the guy who played El Duce from uh, the Boondock Saints. Mm-hmm. So I just assume what will happen He's gonna in the third cool. movie is, like, the orcs will start charging him, and he will open up his vest, and it will be filled with axes, and he will just start throwing axes at all. <laughs> and if they do that, I'm sold. Best dwarf ever. Oh, yeah. Best dwarf ever. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Raging. Yes. Raging about the Hobbit. Apparently. Now, they... I understand where, where they tried to justify it and I understand the logic behind it and everybody else who's trying to explain it to me about how he's adding in parts from the Silmarillion and stuff like that. The Silmarillion should have been a different movie. No. The <laughs> Silmarillion would be a god-awful movie. Yes. But it should, well, have, it should have been a movie. separate movie. Exactly. So like, it's <laughs> awful and deposit it exactly. in a separate movie. Exactly. No, no, no. Movie. <laughs> have 
have either of you read The Silmarillion? Well, no, no, no. I answer the question, Kev. No. no, Kev. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you remember about The Silmarillion, Kev? Drier than Thanksgiving fucking stuffing. What is the first, I don't know, third half of the book of the Silmarillion, Kev? <sighs> Crap. It's Genesis. Yeah. He beget he who beget she who begot him who beget... It's There's a lot of fucking going on. Well, I, it, yeah. But, 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 fucking, but admittedly, the Silmarillion and the Lost Tales did have some of the most defining Lord of the Rings scenes, which is kind of the balance act. Yeah. So I get why they did it, because they didn't want to have like this god-awful movie, which would be so difficult to explain, um, but they wanted to put the things into the, the Hobbit and the Lord of the right. Rings. Right, okay. okay. Um, that, uh, uh, but I get what you're saying. You, uh, lost, Bil you lost Bilbo in, in the second movie, is what like, happened. Um, well, yeah. I just want to plant the seed for later, because um, I haven't seen it yet. What are your thoughts on the third uh, Vendelian movie? Oh, oh. I'm well. just planting the seat now. And okay. We'll okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, Kev, can, Kev can continue. I will go on a long discussion okay. about that okay. movie. All right. Now, uh, my major complaint, like I said, is the loss of Bilbo and the loss of the dwarves in the second movie. The dwarves, they're lost in terms of theme. Bilbo is just lost in the shuffle. Um, the whole story of The Hobbit is supposed to be about Bilbo's growing from being one kind of person into another, and his, his metamorphosis. The first movie was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I loved it. I, I watched that movie, and I did not take a bathroom break because I was scared to. Exactly. Great. The barrel scene was supposed to be a moment where where Bilbo is wondering if he's going to fucking live or die. It's not supposed to be elves against orcs with dwarves bobbing in between this big huge fucking battle. There's different types of conflict and that's what Hollywood fails to realize these days. There is protagonist against antagonist, right? But there's also stuff like protagonist like, against, against the himself. environment yeah. and protagonist against himself. That whole barrel scene in the book was not only Bilbo against the environment, it was Bilbo against himself. And they lost that entire growth moment for Bilbo. Now, I understand how that would have been very difficult to pull off, but if there was an actor who could possibly have done it, it's the actor they had. Why didn't they write for it? I don't. I just don't understand it. Instead, they they did the whole fucking Indiana Bilbo and the Temple of Smog thing throughout the whole fucking movie. Although and again, watching this movie with him was very entertaining. But, but okay, again counterpoint because now you brought yeah. up bells. Okay. Um, I think their depiction of Thranduil was perfect. Yes, he is the biggest, most elitist dick ever. Oh yeah, ever. yeah. And he's like the only <laughs> asshole elf in the Lord of the Rings. Like everyone else, kind of remotely tolerable. They're, him, they're like, no, dick, pure asshole. Yes. Like Thranduil. no compassion. I loved Thranduil. Yes, he was fantastic. Uh, yeah, it, it, I don't think they could have done a better job. But anyway, so and that that whole. Indiana Bilbo and the Temple of Smog thing carried through and ruined what should have been my favorite part of the movie. The whole intellectual sparring match between Bilbo and Smog. You know what? That was supposed to be my favorite <laughs> part of that movie. It's exposition. I think that's the problem with, with most yep. remakes. And that's remakes. the problem with screen exponents in general now. Maybe. Exposition and plot armor. That is what ruined ultimately the second movie for me was the scene with Smog and the unbelievable thickness of the plot armor on those fucking dwarves who shouldn't have even been in the fucking mountain in the first place. Bilbo was supposed to go into that mountain and confront Smog piss Smog off himself, and then Smog was supposed to fuck off. Bilbo was supposed to have this weighing down on his shoulders as a person. This is the defining moment of Bilbo's character. It, from that point on, in his entire life was waking that dragon up and having it butcher an entire fucking city. That was Bilbo's fault. He knows it's his fault, 
That was is, on him. And he is suffering for it, even at the start of the Lord of the Rings. But they do it. They they, they do it. They they just put a whole thing of like dwarves fighting a dragon in between. And, and then smothering him with gold. It's fucking because terrible. Because, of course, dwarves would waste okay. gold. <laughs> of course they would waste gold. No. He was very shiny for a moment. Okay. I, I, I was going to say, because, like, I'm sure no dwarf would ever want, like, a giant dwarf gold statue. They'll just get rid of that nilly-willy because dwarfs. Because they have no love of gold. No, they don't. And, uh... <sighs> okay. Gur, gur, gur. Okay, I want some consensus here. Consensus. Yes. Thorn Oakenshield, mm-hmm. seasoned battle leader, yeah. trained tactician, mm-hmm. from birth as basically a king's son, correct? Okay. Grandson, kind of. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, king's grandson. Yeah, because his dad hadn't quite his, ascended his, the throne his yet. Dad uh, I am on the book so far. Dad, his dad never really ascended the throne. Okay. His dad went crazy. Okay. He take a big dog on there. Okay. Movie, which would be stupid. Carry on. Okay, that's that's established. Okay, um, what is a fire-breathing dragon most immune to? Fire. Fire. Burning things. Heat, burning things. Yeah. Hot stuff. Yeah. It bugs. Yeah. Oh no! I spilled yeah. coffee. I, I love coffee. Now, Thorn Oaken Shield probably knows this because he does. Thorn. 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 The dragon doesn't know. No, 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 exactly. Um, so, Thorin. Some of us have been hitting the rum harder than others. Mm, I've noticed this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now Thorin. Right. The, the seasoned battle leader who's, who's trained and educated and in all things tactical decides that, hmm, I've got uh, 12 dwarves here. We can take a dragon that took out our entire civilization, no problem! And we're gonna do it with fire! Hey, hey. Hooray! Oh, I respect this decision. <laughs> it's like, we're gonna make it angry and send it to the humans. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're dwarves in the mountain, we're gonna close the door. <laughs> That's gonna work out well for him. Oh! I have a prediction. Yeah. Uh, another thing that was kind of lost in this movie. Uh, uh, I really have hate on this. Uh, Bards. I got he 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 freaked out. Okay. He freaked out. Was it Bard the Ballistaman? Oh, what? Was it Bard the Ballistaman? Was uh, it was he a Ballistaman? They, they never. Art, artillerist. They never quite said the arrows. I, I think I I think I I think I know why they went with that though. Because they didn't want a human staging Orlando Bloom. <laughs> but just, that's what he's supposed to fuck it. Just, just throwing it out there. Uh, uh, it was in his contract? It was in his contract. It was in his contract. Okay. It was in his contract. Contracts make everything make sense. So yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, I, I just, yeah. It's supposed to be a big, huge U longbow. With a cloth yard shaft, a magical black arrow. It's supposed to be ob- obviously magical. It's supposed to be the last arrow that he uses, that, that type of stuff. That arrow is supposed to go flying up and kill the dragon. Right? No. Uh, it, it will do that, just at a much larger scale. Michael Bay explosions. Yeah. Yeah, Smog's going to explode and. Michael Bay explosions. Yeah. Not before Bard. Michael Bay Smog. Man, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Michael Bay Benedict Cumberstone. Okay. But Bard will put on his powered armor and you know that would be amazing if he just like suited it up. I kind of want to like. No, I Sherlock series. I should watch it. Shouldn't I? It's really good. Okay. Grabs a tower in his big, huge, freaking Evangelion armor and smacks Smog across the face of the tower. And take take notes, Peter Jackson. Take notes. Because this is going to get you your dollars in the next movie. The movie's already done. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just, just throwing it out there. Late, not too late to edit it. Just ask Lucas. Another tragic thing about the the story, uh, the, the second part of The Hobbit, was that it's supposed to be about the plight of the dwarves, which, again, was lost by the addition of... Plot armor filled combats and and uh, uh, minecart rides and stuff like that. It was supposed to be 
them trying to get their home back. It was like, uh, it's supposed to be like Exodus is what it's supposed to be like, right? Where you get them going from where they were to the promised land, escaping like this nomadic life where they don't have a home and going to where they belong. That's what it's supposed to be about. The trials and tribulation of these dwarves trying to get their homeland back. That was completely lost. Oh. 